Most people do not know how to think. When they're faced with a problem, they will go to any length to avoid thinking. They will ask advice from the most illogical people, usually people who don't know any more than they do, next-door neighbors, members of their families. Very few of them have reference books. But much more important than that, only one in I don't know how many thousands will take a large notepad, write the problem at the top of the page, and then deliberately turn on his or her thinking apparatus. But some people do think. They do indeed. In order to reflect a moment on the human mind, consider what it's accomplished. As you do, realize that we are developing so rapidly that we've come further in the realm of progress in the past 50 years than in all the preceding 10,000 years of human civilization. Of all the scientists who ever lived, it's estimated that 90% of them are alive today. We've reached in the area of ideas and human advancement a plateau so high it was undreamed of by even the most optimistic forecasters as recently as 30 years ago. But every new idea triggers additional ideas, so that now we're in an era of compounding advancement on every front and in every area that stagger the imagination. The harnessing of the power of the sun in our atomic plants and ships the speed of light computers, which in minutes save months and years of calculating drudgery. Every man-made thing you see and touch spawned from the most powerful agency in the world, the human mind. Dr. Harlow Shapley of Harvard has said that we're now entering an entirely new age of man. He calls it the psychozoic age, the age of the mind. And you, my friend, own one, free and clear. Now let's look at a few facts. The 40-hour week long standard is in imminent likelihood of being even further shortened. This means that the average working person has at his disposal an enormous amount of free time. In fact, if you will total the hours in a year and subtract the sleeping hours, if he or she sleeps eight hours every night, you will find that this person has about 6,000 waking hours, of which less than 2,000 are spent on the job. Now, this leaves 4,000 hours a year when a person is either working or sleeping. These can be called discretionary hours with which that person can do pretty much as he or she pleases. So that you can see the amazing results in your own life, I want to recommend that you take just one hour a day, five days a week, and devote this hour to exercising your mind. You don't even have to do it on weekends. Pick one hour a day on which you can fairly regularly count. The best time for me is an hour before the others are up in the morning. The mind's clear, the house is quiet, and if you like, with a fresh cup of coffee, this is the time to start the mind going. And here's one good way to do it. During this hour every day, take a completely blank sheet of paper. At the top of the page, write your present primary goal, clearly, simply. Then, since our future depends upon the way in which we handle our work, write down as many ideas as you can for improving that which you now do. Try to think of 20 possible ways in which the activity that fills your day can be improved. You won't always get 20, but even one idea is good. Now remember two important points with regard to this. One, this is not particularly easy. And two, most of your ideas won't be any good. When I say it's not easy, I mean it's like starting any other habit. At first, you'll find your mind a little reluctant to be hauled up out of that old familiar bed but as you think about your work and ways in which it might be improved, write down every idea that pops into your head, no matter how absurd it might seem. Let me tell you what'll happen. Some of your ideas will be good and worth testing. The most important thing, however, that this extra hour accomplishes is that it deeply embeds your goal into your subconscious mind, starts the whole vital machinery working the first thing every morning, and 20 ideas a day, if you can come up with that many, total a hundred a week, even skipping weekends. An hour a day, five days a week, totals 260 hours a year and still leaves you 3,740 hours of free leisure time. Now, this means you'll be thinking about your goal and ways of improving your performance, increasing your service. Six and a half full extra working weeks a year, six and a half 40-hour weeks devoted to thinking and planning. Can you see how easy it is to rise above that so-called competition? And it'll still leave you with seven hours a day to spend as you please. Starting each day thinking, you'll find that your mind will continue to work all day long. 
and you'll find that at odd moments when you least expect it, really great ideas will begin to bubble up from your subconscious. When they do, write them down as soon as you can. Just one great idea can completely revolutionize your work and, as a result, your life. If you want to develop the muscles of your body, you take daily exercise of some sort. The mind is developed in the same way, except that the returns are out of all conceivable proportion to the time and energy spent. The mind of man can lift anything. His muscles, even the best developed, are puny alongside those of some of the dumbest animals on earth. If man had depended on his muscles for survival, he probably would have disappeared as did the dinosaurs, which were, incidentally, the most physically powerful and most successful creatures that ever lived. Let me give you just some of the results people have reported to me as a consequence of following this one-hour-a-day routine. An office equipment salesman sold more of his company's product in one month than he informally sold in an entire year during the four years he'd been with his company. A Sunday school teacher with five pupils set a goal of 30 pupils. Her last letter told me she now has a class of 25. She's almost reached her goal. I've used this system for years, and it's given me some of the most gratifying and rewarding experiences of my life. And it costs only five hours a week. Five hours out of 168. Is it worth it? It's like spending five hours a week digging in a solid vein of pure gold, because your mind is all of that and much more. Each time you write your goal at the top of the sheet of paper, don't worry or become concerned about it. Think of it as only waiting to be reached, a problem only waiting to be solved. Face it with faith and bend all the great powers of your mind toward solving it. And believe me, solve it you will. You know, this puts each of us in the driver's seat.